Okay, uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, uh, Lara and the other organizers of this uh, wonderful workshop. Great to meet some old and some new friends. And um, we really, really, really enjoyed it. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to describe uh, uh, several works, thinking about uh, what can we learn from Widem and Franz about uh, strange metals. Uh, this is a list of uh, um, collaborators in the different parts, and I'll highlight them as I go along. Many of them are, are here. So uh, this is the outline. Uh, so as we know, um, Wiedemann Franz is this uh, wonderful precision tool that we have in metal physics. So it's kind of uh, uh, one of these, uh, um, um, of these uh, great occasions where we have a quantitative theory uh, which, which actually works uh, remarkably well over many, many materials. Uh, and uh, uh, as, as, we, as we know, uh, it's very useful, among other things, to reveal the, the mechanism of scattering. So one of the things we would like to understand in, uh, in, uh, in strange metals is uh, what's, what's the mechanism that's causing that behavior. So I'll, I'll discuss some examples where uh, we, we can use the uh, wiedemann franz law or its violation to learn something about the underlying mechanism. Uh, I'll uh, uh, raise, the, raise the question. Uh, we know Wiedemann Franz uh, law is obeyed in text uh, textbook metals. What about uh, non Fermi liquids? Of course, uh, uh, not all non Fermi liquids are the same, but I'm going to claim that uh, at least there's a class of non Fermi liquids which we understand where uh, we should expect Wiedemann Franz law to be obeyed. And then I'll, I'll ask, well, if it's obeyed, how do we distinguish, uh, uh, distinguish these systems from conventional metals? And I'll I'll propose a criterion um, uh, based on the behavior of the low, te uh, the low temperature behavior of the Lorentz ratio. Okay, so just a brief uh, uh, recap. So uh, uh, Wiedemann Franz has been long uh, known for a very long time. Okay, so we, we look at the ratio of the thermal connectivity to the electrical connectivity divided by temperature. And uh, the observation made uh, a very long ago is that uh, across many, many metals, this approach is this uh, universal value, which is only, only it made only out of uh, fundamental constants. Uh, this is really obeyed remarkably well quantitatively in many, many systems, okay, many, many metals. So uh, it's been discovered uh, at room temperature, uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to focus on low temperature in this talk. So you see that it actually approaches across uh, all these systems, it actually approaches this universal value of one. Okay, and you see this uh, interesting behavior, which is also a, a, a very, very common in metals. So it's uh, the wiedemann franz law is obeyed, namely L is equal to L naught, in the limit T goes to zero, then it's violated downwards, and then it actually recovers at high temperature. This is actually the reason it was discovered so early. Okay, so at, at room temperature, typically it's, uh, it's close to being obeyed, and we understand why. Uh, okay, so why why is the uh, Wiedemann, when is the uh, 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 is uh, the Lorentz ratio approaching L naught? That's when the scattering is effectively elastic, and you can easily understand that if you just look at the expressions uh, for the thermal current and for uh, the uh, uh, sorry for the electrical current and the thermal current. So you see that if the scattering is uh, elastic, the only way to degrade the current is basically to change the velocity, and uh, it's the same if, if you have quasi particles in, in a metal. Um, um, uh, it's basically the same scattering mechanism exactly that uh, enters both the, the electrical and the thermal cur uh, um, uh, current relaxation time. Okay, so uh, uh, if you have inelastic scattering, there's another way to degrade the, uh, the thermal current, which is to uh, uh, degrade the energy of the quasi-particle without changing its velocity. Okay, and then, then uh, if the scattering is inelastic, we should expect a deviation. So uh, that's why at zero temperature, the scattering is typically elastic. Uh, the wiedemann franz law is obeyed. At finite temperature, uh, it's not obeyed. The thermal current is degraded uh, faster relative to the electrical current. That's why the evaluation is downwards. And uh, it recovers at high temperature because at high temperature, the scattering of phonons is, again, quasi-elastic. The, the uh, typical electron, uh, uh, electronic energy is much bigger than the phonon energy. Uh, so uh, uh, the scattering is, again, quasi-elastic. Okay, so uh, when would we expect then large violations of the uh, wiedemann franz law? It's when the scattering is strongly inelastic, and uh, uh, also when it's, uh, um, it's both inelastic and also small angle. Okay, so this, this is when 
there, there are scattering, strong scattering mechanisms that can degrade effectively the uh, thermal current, but not the electrical current, and we would see this downward violation. Okay, so uh, uh, there's an interesting example that we ran across recently. I'd like to just uh, quickly flash. So if you tune a metal close to a Van Hove singularity, okay, so and this, this has been done beautifully in uh, a, a strontium ruthenate by applying uniaxial strain. Okay, so what that does is it pushes one of the three bands a, a, towards the Van Hove singularity. Okay, so this is what the uh, band structure looks like. It's a very two-dimensional metal, and uh, a, 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 upon applying uniaxial strain, you can drive a, this blue band a, all the way to the zone edge, and you hit, hit the uh, Van Hove singularity. There's a log singularity in the density of states, and it turns out that uh, a, just by virtue of, uh, of this uh, singularity in, in the density of states, you enhance very much the scattering of electrons everywhere on the Fermi surface uh, of electrons close to this uh, Van Hove singularity. So an electron anywhere on the Fermi surface can scatter off an electron close to the Van Hove singularity. Now, this process is inelastic, but it, inv it involves a very small momentum transfer. So indeed, it uh, contributes a lot to relaxation of the thermal current, but not so much to relaxation of the electrical current. There's another process that can happen anywhere on the, on the Fermi surface that uh, involves a one electron scattering into the uh, Van Hove singularity and one electron scattering away. This process um, a, a involves a large, a large angle scattering, so it does contribute a lot uh, to both, a, 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 a both a, a, a electrical and thermal a, a relaxation, a, but uh, this process is weaker, is, is slower than that one parametrically. Okay, so uh, a, the uh, resistivity a, a, a at the Van Hove singularity coming from this process it goes like t squared log t. There's a log correction to the usual Fermi liquid behavior. This has been beautifully observed uh, in strange ruthenate And the uh, prediction made with uh, um, Veronica, who's a student with York, is that uh, the, uh, um, uh, the Lorentz ratio would actually be pyrimetrically violated at low temperature. Okay, this is an extremely clean metal. So as long as the temperature is bigger than the elastic scattering rate, this is the behavior we uh, should observe. Okay, this is coming from this discrepancy between the scattering mechanisms that contribute to uh, electrical and thermal relaxation. Okay, there are many other examples where similar phenomena have been predicted. There's another example that uh, I'd like to just quickly flash. So for those of you who were here a couple of weeks ago, you heard uh, a, 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 a Debungeon actually talking about this uh, example. So this is a uh, De La Fossite metal, it's extremely clean uh, metal, um, palladium chromate, and uh, it uh, exhibits a, uh, a, uh, a, a magnetic transition. It's actually a layered compound made of layers of a mat insulator and layers of, uh, of metal. Um, and uh, it exhibits this uh, broad regime of linear resistivity, which is not unusual by itself. But there's a sister compound with almost identical Fermi surface and without the insulating layer, without the uh, magnetic uh, layer. And uh, uh, that exhibits a much lower resistivity and also not, not, not nearly as linear. And uh, um, first we thought, okay, this is a little bit strange. Uh, and we wondered what might be the mechanism. It turns out that the, the uh, scattering uh, rate here is Planckian. Uh, um, um, the the, the uh, Planckian coefficient is 0.9, one of the best ones. So uh, maybe this should not be thought of as just a usual electron phonon metal, but something more exotic. But just by looking at the Lorentz ratio, Okay, so this is the uh, a Lorentz ratio as a function of temperature. You see that in the same temperature range where the resistivity is Planckian, uh, the Lorentz ratio is one. This tells you this scattering is elastic. It must be phonons, okay? So uh, uh, why are the two compounds different? We proposed a mechanism that involves some interplay between spins and phonons, but at the, at the end of the day, this tells you this must be elastic scattering. You see also the remarkable precision at which the, the uh, Wittemann france law is obeyed at high temperature. Okay, so uh, now um, what I mostly want to think about is really metals that uh, are strange. Okay, and uh, let's think about the strangest of them, cuprates. This is uh, a neodymium doped LSCO. Uh, at a certain dopings by suppressing uh, superconductivity, okay, you see linear resistivity down to 2 Kelvin uh, and, uh, and also a specific heat that goes like T log T. Okay, so uh, really something that looks like a marginal Fermi liquid. Uh, what about the Lorentz ratio here? It turns out that the uh, wittemann franz law is actually obeyed in cuprates, okay? Whenever you can suppress superconductivity by a field, um, uh, the wittemann franz law is found to be obeyed over a range of doping, including this magic doping, 
where the, the resistivity is feed linear down to the lowest temperatures. And uh, okay, this has been studied very, very extensively. So uh, both in the uh, longitudinal Lorentz ratio and also in the transverse one, for which there's, there's also a Wiedemann Franz law for the same reasons, uh, both in, uh, in, in uh, lanthanum materials, in BISCO, uh, in the tantalum material, where it's actually obeyed up to one, uh, uh, up to one percent, okay, at the lowest temperatures. Uh, so what's going on here? We've been told that. Uh, Uh, of uh, which the the the, the, the uh, thermal ones it's sub sub Kelvin. Uh, what? Um, um, it's it's um, yeah. So it's in a magnet. Yeah 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 yeah. It's all it's all it's all in the field. Yeah. Yes. So uh, uh, yeah. So we've been promised that the cuprates uh, are the maybe the most striking example of some kind of strange metal, but they behave just like any 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 garden variety metal in terms of the Lorentz ratio quantitatively, right? So this is pi squared over three. This is uh, really remarkable, I think. So what's going on? Okay, so uh, are these really uh, strange metals with some exotic scattering mechanism, no quasi-particles? Is this uh, just a Fermi liquid with uh, a, a mechanism that maybe we have not quite identified yet of a T-dependent but elastic scattering rate? Okay, this would give you uh, a... Uh, um, um, uh, that the uh, uh, Widmer and Franz law is obeyed. Okay, so uh, uh, to think about this, it's always useful, useful to have a model that we can actually solve uh, that can give us a, a non-fermi liquid in a controlled way. And uh, in particular, what we'd like is a, is a non-fermi liquid model where we can tune the system from being a fermi liquid to being a non-fermi liquid continuously. And uh, um, uh, okay, so uh, there are several such models I'd like to uh, just for the illustration, I'd like to invoke a model that uh, Jorg actually described yesterday uh, that we've been thinking about recently. So uh, this is a model of itinerant electrons or the lattice coupled to uh, a local um, two-level systems. So uh, every site has uh, some number of electronic orbitals and some number of localized two-level systems, and they interact with each other. Okay, so the, for, for this stuff, this is just a, a model used for illustration. I won't discuss it in great detail because uh, Jorg talked about it. Uh, this is my Hamiltonian, okay, so I have n electronic bands, I have m localized two-level systems, there's some uh, potential disorder on every site, okay, local on every site R, and it can scatter you between orbital i and orbital j, and there's some interaction between the uh, two-level systems and uh, the uh, 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 electrons, this model, and uh, yeah, and both uh, this uh, uh, potential and this uh, interaction variable are random with some variance, uh, and uh, these local fields, um, uh, the splitting of the, the splitting of uh, spinnings of the two-level system are random. Uh, they have a distribution with some power law, beta. We consider beta equals zero or one. Focus about beta, uh, focus on uh, uh, beta equals one here. Again, okay, this model can be solved um, in the limit of large n and uh, and large m. Okay, where both the number of electronic orbitals on site and the number of two-level systems is both large. And it's very useful in this context because it gives us, as a function of the, this dimensionless interaction parameter, alpha, it gives us precisely a, tu a, a tuning between a Fermi liquid regime, a marginal Fermi liquid at alpha equals half, a non-Fermi liquid regime, and then if the coupling is too strong, uh, the uh, two-level system simply freeze. We get this uh, back to Fermi liquid behavior plus uh, a, a static impurities. Okay, and uh, the uh, electronic self-energy at low energy, the, the uh, imaginary part for alpha less than one is, is, uh, is a power law, which is changing continuously as a function of alpha. For alpha equals half, we get uh, that uh, sigma double prime is proportional to omega. That's marginal from liquid behavior. Okay, the uh, electrical and thermal connectivities are very easy to calculate in this model. The scattering is completely local in real space. There's no, no, no uh, vertex corrections to either uh, uh, electric or thermal resistivities. Uh, uh, and uh, it's not surprising that the electrical uh, resistivity just scales as t to the uh, 2 times 1 minus alpha, the same as the imaginary part of the self-energy. Okay, so uh, we've computed the, the Lorentz ratio. Um, this is a uh, Vietal who's here as a function of temperature in this model and uh, uh, at t goes to zero uh, the Wittmann and Franz law is actually obeyed and it's uh, obeyed for any alpha between zero and one. Okay, even deep in the non-fermi liquid regime 
alpha uh, bigger than half, uh, uh, Wiedemann and Franz law is actually obeyed, at t goes to zero. At, uh, at, uh, um, at higher temperature, when the, when the temperature is bigger than the elastic scattering rate, okay, so the scale of this, uh, ax of this uh, temperature axis is the uh, elastic scattering rate, um, that's uh, five minutes, okay, great. Um, um, then uh, um, uh, there's a downward deviation, and it actually saturates um, um, uh, at, at uh, its temperature is much bigger than the elastic scattering rate. It saturates to a value which is non-universal, depends on alpha and depends on other other details. Okay, so uh, for for the marginal case, this has been computed in the past. Uh, okay, so the interesting thing, actually, so yeah, so first message. At least there are some non-Fermi liquids where wiedemann franz law is obeyed when t goes to zero. That, that by itself doesn't tell you uh, that uh, there are, uh, or, or, or there, that there are uh, well-defined quasi-particles in the system. Um, okay, we, this was somewhat of a su surprise for us. Maybe it shouldn't have been, but we were doing this calculation looking for a violation, and there, there isn't one. The, uh, perhaps the interesting uh, physics is all hidden in the first correction to the uh, uh, Lorentz ratio at low temperature, okay? So uh, uh, at low temperature, uh, uh, L in units of L naught is one minus uh, T to the power two uh, times one minus alpha, precisely this exponent, okay? So if we can somehow uh, uh, measure the, the first correction to the Lorentz ratio as a function of temperature, that would actually tell us something about uh, the mechanism of scattering in the system. But that's actually my main message in this part, okay, so uh, uh, contrast this with a conventional metal where the deviation should, in a Fermi liquid, the deviation should actually be quadratic. Okay, so why, why is this? The reason is simple. So suppose you have something, um, something like an, a, a conventional metal uh, at, uh, at a temperature above uh, um, in the block, uh, Grunheisen uh, uh, temperature over five, okay, where the electrons can be treated effectively as, uh, uh, the, the phonons can be treated Effective, effectively classically, you get the linear and T resistivity, but this linear and T resistivity enters both the, uh, uh, the electrical and the thermal uh, uh, resistivities in the same way. So the linear term would cancel there. Okay, so that's the important part. You would get only the inelastic part of the scattering, and that would go like T squared, okay, or some, some, some higher power of T. That's why for a Fermi liquid, even if the, if the if resistivity is linear, if there's some source of uh, linear and T elastic scattering, uh, you would get that, uh, uh, that uh, the, the uh, linear part would, it would cancel in the Lorentz ratio and the, the deviation would be a higher power. Whereas here, it's really inelastic scattering all the way down to T goes to zero, and this is why you get this, uh, this behavior. Okay, so uh, um, just uh, two quick notes. The first one is, uh, why is the wiedemann franz law actually obeyed? even though it's a non-Fermi liquid. Okay, so uh, um, uh, we understand the wiedemann franz law in terms of well-defined quasi-particles, but here there are none. So why is it obeyed nevertheless? Um, we don't completely understand, but this is, this is our way to understand it formally. Okay, so we know that in a, well in a, in a Fermi liquid, we have well-defined quasi-particles, means that if we look at the electronic spectral function close to the Fermi surface, it's very sharply peaked as a function of omega. In a non-Fermi liquid, this is not the case. Okay, so uh, even arbitrary close to the Fermi surface. Um, uh, so, so uh, yeah, the, the width of the spectral function is much bigger than the energy of the quasi-particle, so the, the quasi-particle is not well-defined. Nevertheless, if it's certain uh, non-Fermi liquids where the self-energy is uh, weakly dependent on K, um, uh, if we look at the momentum distribution, okay, if we look at the, the spectral function at low, at low frequency as a function of K, it is actually sharply peaked. Okay, and then you can actually still derive a Boltzmann equation, a quantum Boltzmann equation, for the distribution integrated over momentum perpendicular to the Fermi surface. Okay, so this is the so-called Kadanoff reduction, and uh, a, a, the a condition for this equation to close is basically that the width in momentum space is much smaller than the characteristic momentum transfer in scattering, any scattering, both elastic and inelastic scattering. Once you have this, you can derive a quantum Boltzmann equation, and once you have a Boltzmann equation, you have the wiedemann franz law. Okay, so this is, at least this is what happens in these models. It's not guaranteed to happen in any model, of course, of a non-Fermi liquid, even with a well-defined Fermi surface, it, one has to check. But uh, in models where the uh, a, a scattering is relatively local, meaning Q star is large, uh, this, this is expected to happen. Okay, and one, one final note, so how do we think about this? So we propose a criterion, okay, suppose we discover a metal 
that has linear and T resistivity all the way down to T equals zero. How do we decipher it? So we propose sort of a flow chart. So we say uh, the resistivity goes like T to the gamma, gamma is one. Um, so let's look at the Lorentz ratio. Uh, first of all, is the wiedemann franz law obeyed all the way down to the lowest temperatures? If not, oh, this is a new beast. This is a new animal, okay? We really have to uh, uh, rewrite the textbooks. But there are very few cases, if any, where this has really been established uh, down to the lowest temperatures. If yes, we should really look at the, at the correction as a function of temperature at low temperature. Okay, so uh, suppose that this correction goes like t to the power delta, which is not necessarily the same as gamma. If delta is two or larger, this is just a Fermi liquid in disguise. There's some source of uh, temperature dependent elastic scattering, but there are actually well-defined quasi-particles. If delta is smaller than one, in particular if delta is equal to gamma, this is a true non-Fermi liquid. And uh, finally, just a, a last slide. Okay, so uh, what about experiments? Um, uh, so it turns out that there is at least one example where uh, uh, this, uh, the system is apparently a marginal Fermi liquid and it's beautifully revealed by this uh, deviation of the Lorentz ratio uh, from, uh, uh, from the wiedemann franz law. Uh, so with this, uh, this metal, zirconium zinc 2 is a metal close to a ferromagnetic uh, quantum critical point. Okay, the resistivity is t to the uh, five-thirds, exactly what you would expect from Hertz-Millis. And if you look at the deviation of the, of the uh, Lorentz ratio from one, uh, it's linear at low temperature. Okay, and this just comes from the fact that the uh, thermal resistivity is linear in temperature, whereas the electrical resistivity has this other power law. Okay, so this is a true marginal Fermi liquid, maybe the best example I know. Okay, so, yeah. 3D. Yeah. Yeah, let me just flash my conclusions, and uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. This is, you give a master class on how to give a clear talk. This was this. Amazing, okay. So I have a question which is also a comment. I mean, I would have thought at very naive level, and this is what I argued in the paper with Ali, uh, Ali and uh, Danny Bulmarsh, on Willem and Franz law, which you know, basically I was taking a challenge of Santel. Santel said, oh, definition of NFL is violet Willem and Franz law. That inelastic scattering vanishes on the, you know, as, you, as t goes to zero. I, I cannot imagine any elastic scattering by definition unless it's an incredibly strange model. You have inelastic scattering at zero temperature. So by the arguments that you gave, how can Willem and Franz law be violated at t is equal to zero? I just don't see how it can be violated. Yeah. I thought a lot about it, which model yeah. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, 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 uh, I understand. Crazy yeah. behavior at finite temperature. Yes. But as you know, low temperature behavior is impossible to discern experimentally because you have to subtract out things and so on. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. although you know, I like very much what you say. My conclusion yeah. also oh, is that oh, it's oh. very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. So, no. so uh, even um, simple. Right. So, so we. Um, um, Yes, so, so that, that would be the yeah. best example, I think. Yeah. So, but, so, yeah, so, uh, suppose we have a neutral Fermi surface of particles. That would be yeah. a very dramatic violation. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. About exactly the same question. Basically, what you said at zero temperature is that scattering is elastic, and it's not enough. At the same time, it's important that self-energy does not renormalize fermionic dispersion. Yes. This is sigma of omega. Yes. If it does, then you can violate. Yes. So, so I, so I, 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 I think that, uh, right. So I, I, um, I don't know if an example, maybe you do, where it was, you know, computed uh, in such an example where the, the, the self-energy has a singular K, K dependence and you find a violation all the way down to zero temperature, even though I, I think it's possible. I, I think it should be possible for the, from this. From these yes, I violate any rules of that organizer since I have a microphone very quickly. You show that self energy is a function of frequency. Yes. Then you calculate thermal pieces. Yes. Yeah. What about omega over T dependence of the self energy? Is it important? And what about in particular thermal piece in the self energy? Yeah, yeah. Does that's, exist, that's, does that's, exist that's, as a separate piece? That's, that's crucial. The, 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 uh, in these models, there, there is omega over T scaling. In the, so in no the separate self thermal piece? No. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, in, in Abrikosov's textbook on the theory of metals, there is, a, there is a beautiful line that explains, that says, Wiedemann Franz law is a law of nature. If 
ultimately heat and charge are carried by one and the same entity, which is the electron. Yes. So as long as this is true, the T equal to zero limit will be obeyed. Yes. So either you must have other entities that would be on a par with electrons or it's obeyed. I mean, notionally, I agree with you. It's just that you need this entity, this electron, to be also, I mean, at least formally, you usually, the way it's presented, is that you need this electron to be a well-defined quasi-particle. It's not enough that it's, I mean, you know, if it was some collective electronic excitation, maybe it's this collective electronic excitation, still of electrons, but that can carry both charge and heat. But this magic happens, I mean, at the end, it's a Fermi function, right? I mean, where does pi squared over 3 come from? It's a Fermi function. It's a property of independent electrons. So that's why, for me, it was somewhat surprising that you actually don't need well-defined quasi-particles. So what would it look like for cases where you have truly, say, a fractionalization, like in one-dimensional systems, there's been charge separation, or fractional quantum Hall effect? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's a good question. So, you know, I mean, fractional quantum Hall effect is an insulator. So it's a little bit, I mean, there are phonons. It would just be dominated by phonons. It's a little bit hard to. In one dimension, one would need to set up the problem properly. You know, I mean, the trouble is that a larger liquid would have infinite, infinite thermal and electrical connectivity. It's a ballistic system. You would have to introduce impurities and think about what they do. And they can either localize the system, and then it's an insulator again. OK, so one would really have to think about how to, first of all, we want to get a metal. And then we can negotiate. Of course, an insulator violates the Rudiman Franz law infinitely. First, a comment on Dirk's question and your answer. Actually, people thought about it. And there is a solid example in light energy liquid, except for you think about conductances rather than conductivities. So and there is a solid result from David Kmelnitsky, Rosario Fazio, et cetera, that the ratio of the thermal conductances of a quantum wire and charge conductances of thermal wire does not violate, oh, sorry, violates the Rudiman Franz law. Violates, yes. As a question, I had on the data for the coup rate. So I just wanted to clarify. You said that Rudiman Franz is a bit. Is it a statement about the lowest temperatures, or it's? Lowest, lowest temperatures. Only, only lowest temperatures. Yeah. At high temperatures, it's violated in various ways. It can go above one. It often goes above one. And now I am Chandra Varma. There is a comment from Chandra. The most amusing part of all this is that even though the specific heat is still of T, it doesn't come into thermal conductivity. Correct. This is proved by Maya Basha and me. Yeah. Me. In models in which there is no T log T specific heat, as is in SYK, or the funny two-level states model, no equation, this equation does not arise. Yeah. It's a comment. Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Eris. I just wanted to ask a question about experiments. Are there experiments on cuprates in the presence of a field that can measure this correction and the exponent of the T to the gamma? Good question. So we, meaning Vital, has looked hard for this. There is an experiment. This is in the transverse Wiedemann Franz. By the way, it looks like everything I said applies for the transverse Wiedemann Franz. And taken face value, it looks linear. It's an underdoped YBCO at a high field. The resistivity is not quite linear here. So I'm not quite sure what to make of this. We would really want people to go back to neodymium doped LSCO, the thallium material, and try to look for this. But for what it's worth. Yeah, a naive question. 
in your analysis, or generally when people think about Peterman funds, do are vertex corrections ever considered in this context? So um, uh, within the Boltzmann equation, yes. So you know the, the Boltzmann, uh, Boltzmann equation takes into, uh, into account vertex corrections. And uh, uh, as long as the Q dependence of the scattering is not too singular, uh, everything I said is okay. false.